Welcome to Disruption Dialogues Podcast Season 2. Listen to the influential leaders and trailblazers from around the world as they share invaluable insights to navigating the fifth industrial revolution. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Disruption Dialogues Season 2. I'm Salman Singh, President and Chief Commercial Officer at Markets and Markets. Today, I'm in conversation with Thomas Burr, Chief Strategy and Innovation Officer at E.ON. E.ON is a European multinational electric activity with revenues of over 115 billion euros in 2022 and with its headquarters in Europe and operates in over 30 countries. Thomas is someone I've known for many years. And when we first met, he was head of strategy and corporate development in RWE. We share a similar passion of looking at the future. Thomas, in his 30 years of impressive career, has witnessed and led transformation of the utility sector with great success. Thank you, Thomas, for joining us today. Today, we'll be talking about the future of utilities. I believe the future of energy is going to be decentralized, decarbonized, digital, with decreasing use of energy. As per markets and markets analysis, the global energy investments will rise from 2.5 trillion today to around about 5 trillion by end of this decade. And we'll be moving from using over 80% of fossil fuels today to about two thirds of renewable energy supply by 2050. So Thomas, what do you think of the future of energy and what is your view on the future of utilities? Well, uh, I guess that uh, the future of, uh, of, of utilities, future of energy is a very exciting one, uh, given the fact that all our journey towards uh, net zero, making uh, this uh, planet uh, CO2 free until 2050, which reflects most of the targets of, of, of uh, uh, the nations uh, on, on Earth, is really kind of the bringing a man on the moon kind of mission, which is, in my point of view, super, super excited. And uh, we as E.ON, uh, like many other partners on this journey, global partners, we are really, really excited uh, to be part of this journey and uh, not only to uh, let's say uh, and yeah, yeah, make that possible, but also drive and lead this journey, right? Thank you, Thomas. And Thomas, what does it really need to get to net zero carbon globally? So first of all, we have to state that already a lot is happening at the moment. Uh, roughly one trillion dollar annually flow into energy transition. That is twice as much as three years ago, that what I would call the last pre-crisis year. That's amazing. Yeah? Uh, most of the money goes into renewable power generation, but also into electrification of transport, electromobility, and so on, and into electrical heat. That is quite encouraging. However, analysts estimate that it needs more than $180 trillion. Imagine that number till 2050 means five to six times the annual amount compared to today to achieve net zero globally. Yeah? And uh, we have to ask ourselves uh, going for, and, and I guess it's a very realistic number. We have to ask ourselves, where does that money all need to go? First of all, of course, in the renewables. Uh, um, but we have to be aware that all technologies to get to net zero are already invented. They are already there. There is no silver bullet coming from, from somewhere. Either we will make it with the technologies of today with all their, uh, let's say, scaling and, and, and leapfrog developments, or we won't make it. So there is no fusion reactor coming until 2050. Uh, there is not a renaissance of nuclear all over the planet. That is all not happening. We will make it with um, wind, with solar, uh, with, uh, 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 let's say, even better storage capabilities uh, to get to net zero. To bring that all together, and that is really my point, what we need is investments into infrastructure, which means fully digitized distribution grids in the first place. Because in the future where, um, let's say, the, the energy production will happen with renewable uh, installations with uh, literally no variable costs, it's not about, uh, let's say, uh, taking a quantity of fuel and making an electron out of it. It's all about getting the right electron at the right moment at the right place in a decentral, fully 100% electric world. That my point of view, what really needs to happen is, what is the 
the operational system of the of the energy transformation what is the 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 digital glue which keeps it all together and these are fully digital distribution grids in the first place thank you thomas thomas you had the uh, innovation in eon what is the role of innovation in the utility sector um yeah again i guess uh, energy transmission and distribution is where the by far biggest transformation of this energy world happens today means going to net zero means building an entirely new architecture of the energy system we are going from a central top-down transmission and distribution of electrons and molecules to a completely decentral world it means energy is generated and consumed locally that is a system which you simply cannot manage by central control or even by human brains anymore it requires decentral digital control of energy flows in real time we need at the edge uh, computing uh, architecture in decent in in a decentral uh, environment uh, just to give you an example um, it is it would be absolutely crazy to generate uh, power on with rooftop solar uh, send it through the whole grid uh, on the uh, 380 kV transmission lines and then redistribute it to other uh, consumers or to other users so what we need is let's say small networks small communities neighborhoods or small towns which uh, uh, let's say bring themselves energetically into balance based on 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 uh, uh, yeah, computing uh, digital and uh, uh, stuff which is coming through innovation which is not yet there thank you thomas um thomas i know you you deal with fast growing business startups how do you see their role in energy transformation and decarbonization yeah um, building on on what i what i uh, answer to the last question innovation is what i call the big silver bullet for digitization at the end of the day what we observe is, and again, starting with some numbers, the venture capital which flows into clean tech and digital energy business went up by the factor of five during the past three years, showing a really, really exponential trajectory. That, that means the innovation in energy systems, which in the past was basically driven in long cycles by the utilities and the equipment makers is progressively getting nurtured by venture capital. You know, in past utilities were used to plant stuff for five years, build stuff for five years, and then operate it for 50 years. That has determined the perception of what is an innovation cycle in our industry for more than one century. Now we see that venture capital, which was in the past used to boost pizza delivery startups to unicorns discovered the energy transformation at their playing field and that in my point of view is entirely good news we we as eon we are invested in more than 50 startups globally we are operating our venture capital activities from europe but also from israel and uh, the united states um, and what we see is and we are on this on that journey now since more than seven years all these small startups with the help of the larger utilities like us they now uh, let's say embark on the mainstream more or less their products find their way into our uh, into our product portfolios and they, they really they re really grow with us yeah so in my point of view there is um, instrumental synergy between fast growing young companies like startups and big utilities because no one will, let's say, be successful on this mission uh, without the other. Yeah. So we need each others on this journey. Clearly. Thank you, Thomas. Totally agree. Uh, Thomas, we've seen the. Uh, I think we're coming into an era where we're moving from narrow AI to general AI, and Chat GPT has just been amazing what it can do, over, and we've seen that over the last few months. What do you see as the role of generative AI within the energy sector? Uh, that's a very that's a very good one so the really really honest answer is we do not know fully yet uh, there are 
Actually, with uh, with generative AI coming up, there are some obvious low hanging fruits to, uh, for use in, in 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 our industry, such as call centers, customer care, workforce manager management, etc. A lot of waste and slack, of course, will be taken out of the system. If you think about all the legal stuff like contract management, forecasts and planning, tax and whatnot, you know our. Annual reports, for example, they're usually uploaded by the analysts by ChatGPT for checking our statements and kicking all tires with minimum effort. Guess what happens if we start writing our annual reports by using AI? That would be a very bizarre example of machine talking to machines with really, really questionable value added at the end of the day. But I'm seriously, I'm deeply sure there will be more and we will find out. What we will do as E.ON, uh, we will uh, ask for a, for a competition with, with a substantial uh, a price uh, to, uh, to be gained here. Um, we have our, our networks uh, with the startups. Uh, we are, um, let's say, quite often um, performing what we call grid challenges, where all our colleagues in the operational business articulate a problem and we ask uh, the community of startups to come up with solutions. Um, we have a university network with Stanford, with Aachen, for example, um, and we have a lot of brain power of our uh, employees out there in the fields, working uh, on the shop floor, uh, working in the fields day by day. We will ask them, what is your uh, let's say a one billion dollar idea for using generative AI in your business, and we will see what what else is coming out of it. If someone and and we cannot plan it top down. If someone told me uh, five to six years ago, everyone said when um, let's say uh, artificial intelligence kicks in in industry, the first who have to suffer are the blue collar workers and uh, the low wages jobs. And only the uh, let's say the the highly paid jobs will survive. Look what's happening now. Yeah, the lawyers, the tax people, the controllers, even the strategists—they are highly highly threatened by uh, ChatGPT eating, eating their their day-to-day -day, uh, uh, business lunch. Whereas, uh, let's say, uh, truck drivers uh, uh, earn a fortune because they are simply a scarce resource or other craftsmen are the scarcest resource we have at the moment and the biggest uh, threat for the energy, uh, uh, energy transformation to happen. What I want to say with that is you cannot plan it top down. Let's ask the crowd, let's ask the operational intelligence where generative AI will kick in and make the difference. Thank you, Thomas. Totally agree. We see, we see generative AI maybe supporting in productivity gains, but eventually efficiency improvement, and then also helping us, you know, create mm -hmm. innovation in the future. Um, one of the other uh, trends we see in markets and markets is what we call marketplace everywhere. Do you see a marketplace also in the energy sector and utility sector? Yes, I see this, and uh, I also see a lot of potential and a lot of chances uh, in uh, using these shared platform for the future. Look, we as Eon, for example, we um, we are uh, quite a substantial player in the distribution business in Europe. We always ask ourselves how to make strengths out of size, out of out of sheer size. Yeah. And uh, our answer to that is, if you want to, uh, if you want to transform size to strength, you also have to take over responsibility to lead the way. That means you have to open uh, your platforms uh, for also for third parties to embark on it and also to sell their services. Um, and. Um, um, this is uh, this is really a cultural uh, a cultural change for us, because uh, our industry in the past was widely used to apply proprietary know-how, um, and whenever we started to open our platforms, we sometimes ran into the trap to simply replicate the complexity of our organization to the outside world, uh, which was not really compelling to others to embark. That is something uh, we want to change. We invented a platform which is called Eon One, 
where we now already implemented the first external startups into it. So it means uh, the startups which we um, which which we helped growing in the past years, uh, we uh, took them over. Means uh, we took uh, operational control, but we let them work under their own brand, uh, under the umbrella of Eon One, uh, so that they can continue their third party business but progressively become the gold standard for our internal operations. Um, and the same happens with our, uh, with our internal uh, digital applications that we uh, invented, invented in the past. In the future, certainly also generative AI uh, applications. And we offer them, first of all, to all our uh, internal companies, but also to the third party market. Um, and I guess this is the future because uh, we cannot, uh, uh, let's say, perform this journey only on our own, only with proprietary know-how. We need to be open. We need to be, we need to be able to share also ideas um, to get uh, ahead on the uh, towards this greater goal. So to answer a question, yes, I guess marketplaces in energy widely unknown so far. A lot of companies failed with it. But I guess uh, it's a time now for stuff like that to happen and also to be offered to the market. Thank you, Thomas. So maybe moving to a last question, but also a bit more personal, Thomas. So Thomas, you've had a very impressive career. You've been a CEO, you've been a CIO, a CSO. What are your recommendations to future leaders in the energy sector based on your experience? So first of all, um, uh, be open for the change. Yeah. We are a, a very conservative industry, uh, but that uh, is will undergo tremendous transformation, tremendous disruption even, and change. And uh, uh, my point of view and my recommendation would be embrace this change. Yeah. It is, it's, it's really worth it. Um, it, is, uh, it will create no new jobs. It will create a new passion for our young talents. And it will make us absolutely attractive employers if we are open for digitization. Um, because digitization, and as I said, in my point of view, is a silver bullet for uh, the energy transformation to happen. Um, and the, 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 the sooner we are open to become a, a, a fully digital utility, um, the, 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 the sooner we get there. And that only happens if we are open for the new which is coming you know, for uh, and 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 be even courageous enough to to disrupt ourselves. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Um, and that is also based on the experience of uh, of former uh, disruption. I mean, uh, think back when uh, the big run up of uh, renewables happened and uh, the fossil uh, generation uh, really had a hard time and at the end of the day um, became uh, yeah, uh, really at uh, the, the, the technology of the past, right? A lot of people uh, resisted this movement, um, but at the end of the day, you cannot stop uh, a development when the time has come. Yeah? And those who openly embrace this change and also embrace this disruption, which happened already in the past. Um, they were those who really brought this company forward at the end of the day. Yeah. Totally. So long Thank answer to a short question. Be open to change. <laughs> I guess we will have to be. Thank you, Thomas, for such an interesting discussion. Um, I think when I said, when we started this, I said that we believe the future of energy is decentralized, decarbonized and digital and uh, you have really well mentioned that and confirmed that um, and i think we we agree that in the future portfolio will require access to a diverse and digitally enabled portfolio and i guess this will span generation demand storage and other technologies so thank you everybody for listening in i was in conversation with thomas burr chief strategy and innovation officer at eon thank you thomas once again stay tuned for such interesting episodes on disruption dialogues Thanks for tuning in. If you want to know how you can navigate and thrive in this disruptive era, subscribe to Disruption Dialogues on your go-to podcast channels and stay tuned for more interesting episodes.